Hello and welcome to In the Classroom, an educational podcast making teaching and learning more transparent. My name is Benjamin Stewart at BenjaminLStewart.org. Today I want to talk about searching for articles. I am specifically thinking about those students who are taking a thesis seminar of this course with me. Wanted to share a couple of tips using different technologies, different approaches to finding articles. Remember, for your thesis paper, you're going to be asked to try to stick primarily with um, articles, peer-reviewed journal articles. And so these are going to be the best sources that support the ideas that you include in your thesis paper. And anytime you're writing an academic paper, regardless if it's a a thesis or maybe just a five-paragraph essay, if it's an academic paper, really your best source, again, are, are going to be those researched articles. So let's look at a couple of ways that we can go about searching for articles. Now, I'm recommending for those who are taking thesis seminar to limit your books, if you're going, if you're going to include books, to, uh, to include only up to two books total. Now, if you don't include any books and you include only peer-reviewed articles, even better. But I think books serve a purpose even if you're not going to include those books as references. I'll say the same with Wikipedia. A lot of times you'll probably hear from teachers not to use Wikipedia, and that's true in the sense that we don't want to include in our references uh, section any type of encyclopedia, any type of dictionary. We want to avoid those types of references. But when we're looking at topics and we're looking for Peer review journal articles, sometimes Wikipedia and books uh, have a purpose. So let me give you an example. Let's say that I want to find some information about implicit learning. Well, I might start with Wikipedia to get kind of a general overview, some ideas, uh, some general information about the topic. And towards the bottom, you'll notice that we have a list of references. Now, one of the things that we want to include at the time of this recording, we're, we're just getting into uh, 2021. We want to try to include, uh, we want to try to include uh, sources that are within five years for the most part. Now, there are going to be some examples or some exceptions, I should say, where maybe some seminal work will be included or could be included, and you might find some of that seminal work here in uh, this list of references, perhaps. But by and large, most of the sources need to be current. And again, current within the last five years is going to be a pretty good rule of thumb. But still, we can go about looking at some of this uh, research. A lot of times, even the same research, uh, researchers will, will publish more recent work. All right? So we can almost uh, use some of these older works and kind of build on that and find more current work as we as we narrow down our search. But let's say that we want to find a journal article. All right, so if we're looking at this now, because we're looking at uh, Wikipedia, we have a DOI, and a lot of times by clicking on that link, that's going to take us directly to a site where We may or may not be able to download the entire document, but certainly we can get more information about it. So if we're doing the same approach, or if we're taking the same approach and we have a a book, and we're looking in the book at the references, obviously we're not going to have a hyperlink that's going to take us directly to the page. We might have a URL, which might help. But let's say we don't have either one of those. We just take, let's say, the... the, uh, the title of the article. So let's let's take one here with a little bit longer, um, a little bit longer title. So let's say that uh, let's look at this one here by Stadler. Okay, so we have the title of the article. We're going to copy this again. The same approach can be taken if we're using a book or Wikipedia, but we want to try to find this article. Now, notice I'm using DuckDuckGo. I highly recommend using DuckDuckGo and you install it in your uh, browser of choice. 
I have it up here automatically. So if I use the Omni bar here and I use what's called a bang, bang is a way to narrow down or filter a search using DuckDuckGo. And we initiate a bang by using the exclamation mark. So in this case, let's say that I want to search in Google Scholar. DuckDuckGo will recognize this bang if I type in the word scholar. So again, the exclamation mark, scholar, and then the title of the article. And this will, again, just filter and take me directly to Google Scholar with this search. And it looks like at first glance, there is no PDF available for this particular article, although it did locate the, um, the article itself. We can go in and just take another look and see if there are any options. Now, notice in this case, we have, uh, we're using uh, this search to find the publisher, in this case, Cambridge University. So we could go into our library. This is our library that uh, is available to us as students of our university. And we can copy and paste again the same uh, title of the article. So we go into now a, um, a database search, and this is a, a good way to search across all of the databases that we have contracts with uh, for uh, finding different articles. And here we are able to find the same article. And as we kind of do a quick search, it again looks like it's uh, not going to be available to us. Okay, sometimes we can find this, especially if it is a publisher that we have a database already for, that we have a contract with at the university. Sometimes we can find a, the same article. We can find the incomplete article by going into our library database. Right? Um, but in this case, we were not successful. Well, we could try one more search, and we're going to use DuckDuckGo again using the the bang with the exclamation mark MSA for Microsoft Academic. This is the same approach. It's going to take us directly to Academic or Microsoft Academic. And I actually forgot to type in the title of the article. Try this again. This will take us directly to Microsoft Academic where we can find the same article. But again, it looks like that we're not going to be able to find the entire the entire article right try one more it has a second link here and it looks like we're not going to have access to the entire document right so there's going to be one more option here for us that we can use. And that's using this website here, SciHub. Again, we're going to type in the title of the article. And in this case, we were able to find the article. Now, this doesn't always work out. I just have shown you several different ways of searching articles. And in this case, we were uh, successful. Sometimes you're not going to be successful, right? So it, you know, it's quite possible that there are articles out there that you really want or need, but you're not going to be able to find. And uh, I want to show you the different ways that you can go about finding different articles. And certainly, you can choose the order in which you do these searches or use these different sources to find the articles that you're looking for. But... Try to exhaust all of these options before, uh, you know, before maybe going and looking for maybe a different article. Let's say that you were unsuccessful and were not able to find an article. You can always try to find the same information, but find a different source. Try to find a different article that really supports the same idea. Many times you're able to find what you're looking for um, by, lo by just searching another article another source. All right, so uh, keep this in mind. These are different ways that you can go about doing it. Notice, again, I'm starting with a book 
or a Wikipedia as a general reference point to see what kind of um, sources are being included in those citations, right? If you're looking at a book, they're probably going to uh, include different citations that are linked to studies, hopefully. And so those are the sources that you're looking for. Again, you're not going to use the book necessarily to as a source for your paper, but use the book and the wik in the uh, Wikipedia's out there um, to narrow down your search, going directly to the uh, to the references listed. Now, one more bang that's useful, and there are a lot of bangs if you're interested in using and exploring DuckDuckGo and really trying to benefit from all of the search capabilities that are available. If you're searching for, uh, let's say, implicit, explicit grammar, notice this bang, exclamation mark, and then W. This is going to search directly into Wikipedia. So notice I didn't have to go into Wikipedia first and then do a search. It just streamlines the search process by using a bang and taking the user directly to that particular page. If you're interested in bangs and knowing more about it, you can go to um, DuckDuckGo and just do a search with the exclamation mark with bangs, and it's going to give you some information. They have 13, it says here 13,564 bangs and counting, so they're always adding to it. This page that I'm showing you here, again, exclamation mark, bangs, will take you to this page where it also lists categories. So if you're wanting to find, let's say, a research category, academic, then it lists all kinds of different bangs available to you depending on what page, what source that you prefer to use. Again, this is a way to streamline the search process. And I highly recommend that you take this approach to finding different articles and of course if you've exhausted these options that i'm sharing with you today feel free to reach out to me if you need some assistance to uh, find those sources but these are the processes this is the approach that i find useful this is what i'm going to do when someone comes to me and says i can't find an article i'm going to exhaust these options that i'm sharing with you today so i'm sharing these with you so that you can do the same when you're trying to find articles. If anyone is in a situation where you're really not sure about the topic in terms of finding information to support your topic, these are conversations we need to have right away. So please reach out to me when, uh, if this comes up, you're concerned about finding articles to support your research. For those who are taking thesis seminar, one of the main things I suggest from day one is trying to find at least one primary research study that very much resembles the study that you want to uh, do yourself. This helps you maybe find uh, some instruments that you want to use, maybe some questionnaires, survey, maybe even the process of collecting data will be helpful, will give you some ideas that you can do. Remember that it's very important that we try to replicate an, a study that already exists, a study that has been conducted by someone out in the field and has published their findings, right? And this, you know, regardless of the findings themselves, just the approach that they took in the method section, the participants, their instruments, the procedures, the way in which they collected the data, the way that they analyzed the data, all of these, this information, all of the information that you can find uh, about how they conducted the study can help you, can be some ideas, can be some ways that you can also replicate yourself. So try to find at least one, I think anywhere from one to three uh, studies out there, you might be able to either replicate I see exactly or maybe modify slightly uh, based on the purposes and the objectives of your own study. So try to keep that in mind as well. This has been In the Classroom, an educational podcast making teaching and learning more transparent. Thanks for listening. <laughs>